Good morning and good evening, my dear brothers and sisters. A warm welcome to one and all of you, and I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As always, I am very privileged, very delighted to stay united through these online sessions, and I want to thank my Lord and Savior for enabling such sessions. And except for His grace, it is not possible for any of us to be united like this. Um, and sessions like these are uttermost important to me. Why? Because they are not just the mere sessions, but they are the word of God on which the whole world operates. I'm not able to believe this. Oh, the whole world operates according to the word of God. Yes, that's the. Those are the laws and commandments in which the whole nature is operating the whole mankind is operating yeah and those that understand this are on the side of god and those that don't understand they may not be on the side of god but god is not against them god always asks you to or in other words, God always waits for you to come back to Him, and therefore you don't miss on His love, right? That that is exactly you know um, what 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 Jesus is trying to teach us or teach every one of us. And why it is important for us to understand His teachings? By the way, warm welcome to this uh, short series. Or I would say a long series rather, <laughs> because we started the, we start everything as short series, but um, you know God doesn't allow me to finish anything on time, and I'm thankful for God for what He's doing through us these days. Um, yeah, and yeah, I'm I'm very happy that God always you know does things in style, and I'm very very supportive to him for anything he desires to do in my, in our lives we never say no to it and uh, that's a reason why these kind of sessions um, which you generally don't happen to um, you know see it in the um, what to say the internet internet or um, any other places you don't happen to see these kind of sessions very easily why because these are very special according to me and this is nothing but about life right and uh, if you if you ask god um, what is the priority to understand you or to live your lives you would say the priority is to first of all understand who the god real god is right and then comes living by the words of god why because without an understanding you generally don't um, get to know what actually this Bible is all about the words of God is all about, and uh, um, if you don't understand these words of God, then what happens is it becomes very difficult even for God to move in and through your life, and that's why you know God always tries to help you um, understand who the real God is, and therefore you don't get into these kind of circumstances where. Things become difficult for you um, to, uh, you know, to to reason when God permits certain things in your life, certain incidents in your life. Uh, you're not able to reason it properly, correct? And uh, the very reason you're not able to reason it properly in your life is because you, first of all, don't understand whether it is from God or not. And the second thing is, if it is from God. Why at all God would have permitted such a thing in your life? Mm -hmm. So those are the things which basically gets very difficult for God to help you or make you understand. Uh, and if you had understood this specific paraphrase, what I'm trying to tell you um, is nothing but always walking in reconciliation with God. Reconciliation in the sense you are one in God, God in you, and you in God. Understand? So, when you can be one in God and God in you, is not before you understand who the real God is. 
we are not able to understand um, the uh, the real God is uh, who the real God is, then it becomes very very difficult for God to you know take you to the next level. Next level in the sense, um, uh, for example, our spiritual growth. You you are all growing right in life. You know you all don't want to grow. You all want to grow right and why why it is important for you to grow in your life is because the life will teach you many new things many wonderful things many things that you might not have experienced right and it's very important for you to understand what are those new things in life a person who learns new things and newer things in life is the one who could be very useful for god a person who shows reluctance to not learn from the word of god um in the sense not understand who the real god is then he is not very useful for the kingdom of heaven he is not very useful for the worldly kingdom too right uh, even in the world forget about the um what is that um forget about the heavenly kingdom for a moment even the worldly kingdom for example you are appointed by an of uh, by a company and they ask you to basically um you know take good care of certain things they give you certain tasks and then six months they're going to measure you how you're going to perform and based on that performance they're going to add more tasks they're going to give you more responsibilities and those are the responsibilities which will determine whether you are capable enough to handle more responsibilities or new responsibilities or new roles and then they increase your role sorry increase your salary increase your uh, level uh, and give you a promotion and then they basically give you more responsibilities and this person who cooperates with a company to accomplish these kind of tasks are the one which are who are very useful for the company um why because he is the person who had understood the objective of the company because the company is dynamic right the corporate industry is very very dynamic and the corporate industry expects you also to cooperate with them and work with them in a way that is very useful for them right and if the if you don't grow company doesn't grow that's for that's for sure everyone understands this right they are all dependent on their employees and if the employees don't grow and for example the guy tells oh six months is over and for the rest of uh, 35 years until my age of retirement i will continue to do the same job there are companies like that they are called as government organizations right same place same seat same desk and uh, they will also rem- uh, leave behind a mark and impression because those many years they would have sat on the same desk and same chair and uh, everyone knows oh this guy uh, uh, that that guy who is hefty and all that because even some of your uh elbow prints are going to be um <laughs> what to say uh, it's like you know autograph that the, the desks will, will will have the autograph of your elbow prints and uh, you know uh, knee pr- whatever uh, all the prints of your body that that company i'm not saying government organization don't grow up. government is very big right by and large they have various departments they have tens and thousands and so many departments and it's okay they have certain people appointed to a certain department and that op- department operates consistently it's enough for them that's not the way how the corporate industry works they are by and large are not too b- too big but then they expect their employees to contribute over and beyond and they want dynamic people why because they still have a lot of things to do in the market they still have to reach out the majority part of the world with their products and therefore they definitely expect that kind of you know the dynamicity from the employee and the more the employees are dynamic the more the company grows right now this fellow if he tells 35 years i will work in the same place and he's not allowing them to promote or whatever that guy is going to be terminated you understand termination no firing him from the job and then he goes and applies for a job in the government organization perhaps he's the perfect fit for certain mechanical work static work he doesn't have to change he doesn't have to do anything different but he has to just continue what he is doing correct that is not bible beloved bible is like corporate industry i might not have picked the one of the best classic examples but what i'm trying to say here is bible is not static bible is dynamic full of 
examples full of illustrations full of parables full of teachings right and that's why these kind of laws which we are meditating are very very important right we are we have meditated recently it is in our playlist the law of authority what authority you had been given from above and god has blessed it with blessed us with all sorts of powers that you and i could exercise and grow and march forward in our lives with the help of the powers given to you from above um, we have got almost like 35 plus sessions available only for that law of authority then we kicked off law of uncleanliness how the unclean spirits could rule over your life if you have not understood the word of god if you have not understood the powers of god then it's as good as like you have ruined your life to stay away from the presence of god you have decided you have made a decision to say no to god and you have made a decision to say yes to the evil powers why because the evil powers like to keep you static right if there is no growth in you they are very very pleased and happy why because you carry the same bible go to the same church sit in the same table and go to this on the same day and wearing the same dress probably i hope you wash the dresses yeah and then you come back to home in the same pattern of walking even your walking style doesn't change and you're hanging the same cross around your neck and you make the same prayer every day 10 minutes in the morning 5 minutes in the afternoon and 20 minutes in the night and family prayer you're very happy and convinced that everything that has been prescribed in the bible as instructions or reproofs or corrections or um, you know the the laws and commandments which you are supposed to understand to handle various departments in your life right there are various departments for the ladies cooking department dressing department and all these departments are there right likewise you have the departments called as patience faith joy love all these nine departments important departments they are nothing but the fruit of the spirit nine flavors and apart from that there are other departments where you could be dynamic and be a blessing to others correct the more you are dynamic in a corporate industry the more faster you grow in level promotions and then you become the ceo of the company or the ceo of the company then you rule over the entire brand and then you become the brand ambassador of the company right without that product this company could not could not survive likewise without your dynamicity without your leadership that product could not survive because you built the product of that company for example you're working for certain xyz electronic company and you built this new brand of washing machine which is so automatic and so easy with so easy uh, you know it 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 really delivers the uh, dirty clothes to be washed and it delivers the clean clothes and you are the one who invented and you have the patent right and the company is highly dependent on you to help to they seek your help that you could discover many other products of the same nature and stature and you could help the company grow and not only you get the patent right for every product that sells you get certain percentage in your bank account you don't you do nothing only once you have invented only once you have um, invested on your dynamicity and you help the company to discover this product but the ideas have come from you therefore you hold the patent is there anyone who doesn't understand the meaning of patent and every product for example 1 lakh pieces of that washing machine sells for every product you will be getting 2% of the uh, profit margin deposited in your account but the discovery happened only once right the dynamicity happened only once but the company is dependent on you similarly a god is also instilling lots of dynamic wisdom the spirit of wisdom and spirit of knowledge in you that is expecting you to do great things for the kingdom of god and be a blessing to the children of god whoever may be whoever it may be believers or unbelievers heathens whoever it may be a god expects you to be the blessing to the children of god and he asks you to lead them from the front people who are in addictions people who are in darkness people who are in uh, deprived state people who are in lonely lonely state people who are hopeless people who have who wants to commit suicide any of them any of them you are the one god appoints as the deliverer right god looks at you as himself because god's character is to walk around jesus did that right jesus moved across ends of the world world and he did good to the people he delivered people who were in bondage and people who were in sickness he healed them people who were dead he raised them to life people who were blind he gave them sight people who were lame he made them walk people who were not able to hear he made them receive their ears you know they are no more called as you know deaf or mute jesus was such a blessing wherever he went and not only that people who 
where in the state of you know guilt and all that he preached and he taught the word of god in such a way that no one was ready to live their lives in the same way again they always sought god they always had lived by the principles of god and that's very important for us to understand why god needs people like you and me because to carry forward the same ministry that jesus left behind someone may ask this question hey is god completely dependent on us god not dependent on us but god likes to work with us in partnership he could of course deploy angels jesus said that if i were to order 12 legions um of angels that is 24000 angels will be deployed right now to re- relieve me from this garden of gethsemane arrest but i have not done so why right? because that's called as ministry with god in partnership and in fellowship yeah he doesn't want this task this task he doesn't want the angels to accomplish but the angels are ready to minister us and help us to carry forward this ministry to serve the mankind to preach and teach the word of god just like jesus taught for which you need to understand who this god who is this who this real god is i'm going to the same starting point from how from where i began this um, you know the teaching correct you need to understand the who real god is what is his character what is he known for what is his attitude why did he write this big book of bible 66 books of uh, 66 books which were published in this bible were written for the mankind why did he do that what is the reason what made him to write this wonderful book of god and therefore he is able to do things through you why would he choose you have you understood all of these from the bible do you understand who the real you are who's living inside of you is it god or is it devil that's exactly the reason why we kicked off this ministry god enabled us to teach and preach from the word of god to help the mankind to understand who the real god is and what god expects of us and what is the relationship between us and god and why did god create the mankind as early as genesis 2 7 and genesis 127 why did god make the decision to create the mankind to in his in his own image why did he keep his spirit in him all these things we have explained in almost all the sessions possible they are all available right the point i'm trying to make here is if you don't have this fair understanding you should have detailed understanding who the god who the real god is and why god created us and what is the relationship that god is expecting from us what is the fellowship that god really expects of us why did he instill the spirit of knowledge wisdom and gave us the free gift of the holy spirit the anointing of the holy ghost yeah and a lot of gifts 1 corinthians 12 28 1, 1 corinthians 14 2 1 corinthians uh, 12 1 to 11 right there are so many gifts teaching is also one of the gifts why did he enable us with so many gifts to accomplish what to sit at home and cook in your kitchen and then deliver the food to your family i'm not saying that is wrong that's one of your responsibilities but that's not the responsibility for which you shall live your life all along yeah 35 years sisters are you in the kitchen doing nothing for god doing nothing for your neighbors doing nothing for this world that is a problem in you and beloved brothers are you so busy in, at the work and you are saying that that's a primary responsibility god gave in my hands that i need to work 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 hard working is good those who shall not work shall not eat food i understand that commandment yeah we are all on the same boat right paul left that commandment but that's one of your roles in fact that role is not even greater than 5 percentage god gave that role why because you will not be sluggish therefore you will not get into one of those dreadful sins sloth right and at the same time you will have to take care of your family that is also part of your responsibility your fellowship begins at home therefore you got to work earn and uh, save the family and lead them therefore you are a good leader you are ready for the next level of growth that is like taking care of the children of god taking care of your neighbors taking care of the unbelievers taking care of the atheists taking care of the drug addicts taking care of alcoholics jesus did all of this taking care of the lame taking care of the blind the mute the sick taking care of the deprived the lonely taking care of those that have lost hope taking care of those that don't want to live their lives again in this world and those that want to kill themselves don't you think so these are all your responsibilities that con- constitutes or contributes to the remaining 95 percentage of the very reason why you are living your life on earth don't you think so this is the reason why god created you and me our oh, brother if everyone have to get into this then 
the world won't be enough. Yes, brother, this world will become like heaven. This earth will become like heaven. This be because why? Exactly this is how we will be having fellowship with each other, always looking for each other's needs. And we will be serving God at the end of the day, right? There you won't have needs like loneliness and uh, sickness and ailment and all that, right? But then those who shall live their lives in that mindset, with an attitude on earth, are the ones who will reach to heaven and they will continue to serve God with the same attitude. They will be part of the mansions built for them. They will be part of the city of God built for them. John 14, 1 to 3 and John, uh, sorry, Revelation um, 21 and 22. You can take and read offline. I'm still stuck to the same point. Yeah, I'm, we are part of the series Evolution and Genealogy of the Christianity. And we are talking through various nomenclatures, various parameters. That is essential for a Christian to live his life on planet Earth. Starts from his belief system. Starts from his value system. Starts from his um, principles. Starts from his doctrines. Spiritual values, spiritual beliefs, spiritual doctrines and spiritual priorities. If these are all set right, then it really makes sense for you to call yourself as the Christian. Christian, Christian or Christianity is not to be called as religion. I told you this. But if, if that is how you want to define Christianity, no problem. Go ahead. If you want to define Christianity as tradition or a law or a commandment or a bunch of philosophies or theological studies, fine. But do it in God's way. Yeah. Do it in the right way. And for all of these, see, names may be different, but all of them boils down to just one definition. That is the word of God. Because why? Any of these titles, any of these names that you have derived is not without, the identity is not without the word of God. The identity, the identity, the mark of these names or titles is nothing but the word of God. And that's why I'm telling you, if you do not know the word of God, you do not know who the, God, who the real God is. And what is the point in carrying the Bible and wearing that? whatever dress and special dress we all wear the special dresses right some people only white and white what is the point tell me how many years you have been going to the same church sitting in the same desk and coming back home and you look at your life the pattern of your life some of the battles in your life some of the sicknesses in your life some of the um, economical situations of your life probably the situation of your husband he still still continues to be a drunkard right he continues to beat you black and blue and you sisters, you continue to be um, somebody who is suppressed and somebody is not growing, bound to the kitchen and bound to some sort of slavery. Your life doesn't change even after three decades, four decades. Why? Because you have not understood who the real God is and what God expects of you. God expects dynamicity of you. And the Bible is full of dynamicity. And why I'm saying this, I initially when we started the session, we said that everything and anything that operates in this world or in heavens or the nature or anything, your life, right? Every organ in your body operates from the law of God, right? Operates based on the law of God, the law of nature, you know, right? Aerodynamics, the law of gravitation, right? The um, I'm not a great uh, science student, but the little that I know, the law of gravitation is very important, um, right? And everything that is going to float in the air, for example, the mountains are going to float in there. It's, look, it's looking so scary. And law of aerodynamics is very important. Why? Because that is the reason how the birds are all able to fly. And that's how a man invented uh, flight. And you're able to uh, move from one place to other place. The transportation gets so easy. It's because of the aerodynamics. That is another law. Right? And the nature, the law of the nature is also not limited to this aerodynamics and gravitation. But also the nature abides to the word of God. You take and read the book of Job, uh, chapter 38, and some of the Psalms where the Psalmist and Job would have, I mean, the Lord God would have told uh, Job, the Lord will come down and talk to Job and his friends, right? And the Lord God would be questioning many things. And one of the things which he would have told is, who marked the boundaries for the seas, correct? Who have stipulated the place for Leviathan, right? Who had done this, who had done that? That means he is the one who is controlling the nature, the world is three-fourth water and one-fourth land. And for the three-fourth water to cover this one-fourth land, it's going to take less than a hour. This is what scientists have said, right? And waters can spring from the underground. Underground waters, you know what happened? During the days of Noah, when the flood had to come, if the flood had to come in the form of rain, it would have taken almost like three, four years for the water to raise up to 150 feet 
about the ground from the ground level but in matter of few days um, if the water had to raise to the 150 i think 40 days right 150 feet above the now don't catch me strong go and check the bible maybe it is 40 days um, to reach that 150 height where noah's ark will have to take off um, that means the water will have to spring from the bottom you know what are those waters when god said that let there be land the one fourth of the uh, ground water were absorbed by the ground and it is all living inside right and what happened is god said let there be flood all these waters you see how the nature obeys god this is why i call it as law of nature as much as the nature is obedient to the voice of god i don't think you and i are obedient i don't think you and i are obedient why because you and i have not understood who the real god is and what are his powers what is his attitude and why would he choose the mankind to um, accomplish the tasks that he had stipulated or predestined because why it's simple he would love to work with the mankind why because he created us in his own image he he sees himself in us and we have to see god in us right we in god and god in us like how jesus said i in father and father in me and the same principle applies to you and me why because jesus was created in the image of god blood and flesh and he was sent from heaven and he lived his life according to the old covenant standards for 30 years yet he lived without as a lamb without blemish not breaking even one of the law of moses and that's how he was qualified to get into the water baptism and jesus uh, was acknowledged by the father in heaven from the windows of heaven and he peeped out and said hey this is my beloved son in whom i'm well pleased and for the second time again our lord opened peeped from the doors and he said open up the doors and he said hey this is my beloved son listen to him there are two times where the lord god peeped out of heavens and he looked in down from from above to the mankind uh, telling them you know this is my beloved son listen to him and i'm pleased in him why we should listen to him because jesus came us to elevate from the old covenant standards or free us from the old covenant bondages right a lot of old covenant commandments and laws if you take and read 613 of them are given and the 613 laws and commandments are sometimes looking like bondages and god wants us to understand this concept that you can no way be able to accomplish 613 if you were able to accomplish 612 you will still fail with one the rich and ruler life you know that right 612 he was passing mm-hmm. but one of them he failed why because that commandment is the toughest do not lust okay you are not definitely going to overcome if you have not entered into the new covenant standards new covenant laws and commandments that's why old testament had 613 new testament jesus introduced 1050 laws and commandments you all understand what i'm trying to say do you know who god is do you know what is the belief system introduced by christianity do you know what are the teachings of christianity you are looking at it as a mere tradition or a mere religion and you put that cross in air right um, first of all forehead and then to your chest and then to your left and then to your right and then one big flying kiss who taught you this you thought you thought this is christianity no christianity is nothing but that helps you to live your life that pleases god and god will look down and say that you know this is my beloved son the same statement which he had acknowledged looking at the ways of jesus he is able to acknowledge you and me this is my beloved daughter this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased and listen to him and he is going to take you to the ends of the earth as his testimony witnessing all that god had done in your life and therefore god is able to do the same things or more than these things in your life and jesus was that role model in conduct and speech and love and faith and purity 1 timothy 4:12 and that's why god used jesus across the ends of the earth don't you think so god is able to use you and me just like jesus was used but for us to be used like jesus you need to follow the principles of jesus you follow the teachings of jesus and that helps you to abide in the laws and commandments of god therefore father sees that he is in you and father sees that you are in him correct like how jesus built that fellowship and relationship with father that always he says i have to consult my father whole night he will have to pray sometimes 
before his ministry or majority of the mm-hmm. times he isolated himself in prayer 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 talking to the father in fellowship before he makes that decision before he makes the choice are you all with me so far right this is exactly the reason why we kicked off this series for helping to helping to helping you to understand the genealogy of christianity evolution of christianity and helping you to understand certain values is values principles and the you know kind of you could revisit your priorities in life therefore you could come closer to god your your spiritual growth is not limited it's limitless it's infinite you know right in 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 um, what is it in algebra you know the infinity symbol correct which means there is no limit sky is the limit maybe heavens is are the limit because no one knows where god lives you 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 all think third heaven is where god lives no third heaven is where the saints of god live that's called his paradise god lives somewhere nobody knows it's far and above probably that is the limit have you reached that limit forget it have you reached to the limit of third heaven at least did you have the experience of of what paul had like he visited the saints of god and he written back to earth did you at least reach that mark so how is that you say that you know i'm not able to achieve this i'm not able to achieve that no that's the lie of the devil because that's not the doctrine of god that's a doctrine of the demons which always demotivates you which pulls you down in the midst of your troubles in the midst of your weakness in the midst of your sickness in the midst of your battles in the midst of your failures in the midst of your losses and errors the doctrines of the demons always pulls you behind pulling backward pulling you backward pulling you from behind stabbing you from behind deceit is called as deception right the, the deceivers will not come to the front and talk to you eyeball to eyeball the deceivers always will talk from the behind you will keep hearing that voice which leads you to depression which leads you to hopelessness which leads you to failure which leads you to giving up something giving up on something which really distracts you which deviates you which defocuses you the voices you will continue to hear from from behind yeah but a god is not somebody who would talk from behind but he talks to you face to face as how he speaks to moses and how he speaks to his son jesus he is ready to talk to you and me face to face eyeball to eyeball and he welcomes you as his children you are my beloved son today i have begotten you bible is saying that right you're all reading the same bible no it's in kjv version and therefore you also should have the same bible yeah i was just kidding you can even have an iv you can even have bsi you can have have student bible every bible will say the same thing today i've begotten you why that today comes because on that day you have made a decision that you will live by the standards of god in understanding that what are the ways of god understanding what god expects of you and you have a fair understanding who the real god is and why i was created in his image you have answers for all of these questions or oh, you don't have an answer don't worry we have recorded all of those it's available in our playlist various playlists are available in our channel you have to just go through the channel start with the truth about the cross series where we have explained why jesus was sent to this world and who are this mankind that jesus will have to be sent for whom he has given his life we gave all the glory to jesus that's that's our first recording or the first series that god enabled when he opened the doors for the ministry all right so warm welcome to the series where we are dealing with this genealogy evolution and the um, what i say the uh, genealogy evolution and the uh, history of the uh, christian congregations we initially started to talk to you from 44 years 45 years before jesus was born and then we also described uh, what all the important events that happened um until um, what i say the 37 years later after his um, death and resurrection um, and then until the death of king constantine we have covered and then we are discussing from jesus who this jesus was just a carpenter's son probably yes but not only the carpenter's son but god's son too who needed that carnal parents to be given birth Uh, because that's how the messianic prophecy stands genesis 3:15 one of the first messianic prophecy that um, you know my son would be born and he will be crushing the head of the satan under his feet and you shall kill him therefore he will resurrect after that right the kind of death that jesus would undergo or would go through had been already prophesied and this jesus um uh, you know uh, has accomplished this messianic prophecies and 
this is exactly what we had been describing little bit but we didn't get into the messianic prophecies he had been born and brought up by his carnal parents through that jewish tradition it's called as judaism and we had given you a very comprehensive uh, teaching on judaism and what are the foundational principles of judaism and why judaism even to this day holds its significance we all explained in couple of sessions or maybe three sessions um, because it's important to understand how jesus was born and how jesus was brought up and why jesus stood for god and why is he called his messiah we are finding answers for all of these don't you think so this is part of the evolutionary study and uh, this is the part of this genealogy that we are discussing what do you thought when i kicked off this session i'm going to present a chart and tell you oh you know in the year of uh, you know what i say uh, uh, 4000 4, bc adam was born that that loving night you know the angels were all waiting for this great son of god the first adam is also son of god no to be born and you know how beautifully and wonderfully created him with all organs in the body psalm 139 14 15 16 you thought i'm going to talk about all the events that happened for that you need bible you don't need me for that you just need you know the, uh, 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 few angels ministering to you you don't even need holy spirit why because holy spirit has already written those very clearly in the word of god you don't need somebody to explain you need little bit of common sense and spiritual sense that's enough this is not the reason why we kicked off we kicked off this series yes to touch a little bit about the history a little bit on the genealogy a little bit Uh, about how the bible is introduced and how the man was born and etc we covered that right but majority of the time we are going to talk about jesus because what he taught and how the way he lived his life and how he was such a blessing to the mankind is what we are going to review and what are the teachings what are the principles he left behind therefore the mankind that is you and me could inherit those principles and become like jesus my favorite verse from the word of god is john 14:12 and which says that you know most assuredly i say to you jesus said this that most assuredly i say to you you and i could become like him um, the very reason is nothing else no rocket science okay there is nothing else that that is because you understand why god created us why did god create us in his in his in his nature in his stature and therefore you and i could become like god right and why we need to become like god why need to become like jesus is because god expects you to do things like how jesus did for him most assuredly i say to you he who believes in me the works that i do he will do also and greater works than these he will do because i go to my father and whatever you ask in my name that i will do that the father may be glorified in the son and if you ask anything in my name i will do it jesus said this yeah john 14 12 to 14 very very beautiful and important verse for every christian for every mankind and this is the reason you could call yourself as christian what are the christian beliefs what are the spiritual doctrines associated what are the teachings associated if you want to call yourself as christian right and that's exactly the reason why we kicked off this series and god is doing a wonderful job so far so good and it's not only to talk about the history in 1022 ad you know i'm not right you know taking care of a theological class you want to know a little bit of theology and history please go and enroll yourself in a bible college and for your information i had never been to bible college why because i have only one university the name of the university is kingdom of heaven and you know who's the ruler of that university yahweh father god and he has deployed his wonderful servant that is the holy spirit who's my own helper and companion and that's enough this is my bible college you want to come and join this bible college you're welcome and you don't have to go and enroll anything anywhere or any you have you don't have to pay anything to anyone all that you need to do is open your eyes beautiful eyes and read the word of god that is the bible given in your hands somebody is laughing louder yes that was a joke but that was not just a joke it's also something um for you to reason about it for you to think about it and therefore you do mighty things for god and you're useful child of god right you want don't you want to be useful for god i want to be a very useful servant of god i won't call myself as a servant of god i will call myself as a child of god right i have the same kingship i have the same authority i have the same cleanliness in me i have the same reverence and i have the same sovereignty i have the same powers that jesus had this is how he lived his life and that's why we are 
reviewing the definitions of Christianity. We are reviewing the definitions of a Christian believer in Christ. How you how you are able to identify yourself as Christian based on certain principles, right? How a person identifies himself as a person who would be voting for this party or that party when the voting campaigning and all happening and the elections come. Why? Because based on the ideologies, based on the belief that they that the politician had instilled in the minds and hearts of his uh, followers, right? And they are going to vote to such party and the whichever party gets the majority, they win the election and they are going to be the rulers of that nation, of that kingdom, right? Our God is not running an election campaigning, right? But because why? There is no competitor for God. Devil thinks that God is his competitor, but God doesn't even think at the corner of his heart or mind that devil is his competitor. God is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. He's omniscient, he's omnipotent, he's omnipresent, and he's the life and the way and the truth. John chapter 14 and verse 6 says that, and he is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings to whom every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Philippians 2, 10 and 11. No competitor and there is no name above this name. That's the name of Jesus. Every other name shall be submissive under this great name. And that's the name of God. God came down as incarnate deity in the form of blood and flesh as how he prophesied. And in Genesis 3.15, he accomplished it through the birth of Messiah after 4,000 years that this world had gone past. God has no competitors, but God has so many, um, uh, what to say, friends, so many children, he expects those to work with him. But we are the ones who keep on rejecting him. Yeah, because why? We have not been grounded and rooted in the word of God. We have not understood the um, prophecies of God. We have not understood the principles which Jesus had taught to you and me. And that's the reason we kicked off this series. Today, the Holy Spirit is emphasizing me to talk a little bit as why would be the reason or what would be the reason that we have kicked off this series. Don't you think so? This is exactly what Christendom is lacking or lagging behind. Don't you think so? You, you, you go to any church, traditional church, uh, charismatic church, spiritual church, Pentecost church, this church and that church. Ask them what is the mainline emphasis of their congregation. Each one of them would have some or other emphasis which is different from each other. Yeah, but they may be connected to the Bible. But then don't you think so? We all have to work together as one community, as one congregation, as one body. We are the members of the same body. But don't you think so? We all have to work together. And why so many divisions? Hundreds and two hundreds of divisions within the Christendom. And they fight against each other like dogs. They bark at each other. They bite each other's flesh. Anyway, I'm not getting in there. This is the current state of the Christianity or Christendom. This is not the reason why Jesus came to this earth. And this is the, not the reason why you and I are identifying ourselves as Christians. Christians means what? You know, living by the principles of Christ. Grounded and rooted in the doctrines of Christ. I don't think you and I are there yet. See, by saying all this, never ever think, oh, he's a great teacher. I'm also a student like you. I mean to say this each time, not to remind myself, but that's the truth. There is only one teacher. His name is Holy Spirit. We are all students. We, are all, we all have fallen short of glory. And we all have weaknesses in our flesh. We are all no good for God. You know that? We are all filthy rags. Any of the best events... Any of the best righteous deeds that you may accomplish for God, it is filthy rag. Dog dung, Bible says. It is going to be dirty, filthy, nasty. Yet God is after us. And what made us to appear like this? Because sin entered into this world and we lost the glory of God. As early as Genesis 3, chapter 1, 3 verses 1 to 9, you take and read, you will know that how the glory Adam and Eve had lost, being compromisers in the only commandment that God gave them, do not eat the fruit. They were not able to keep up that law or commandment. I am very, very happy that they are not living today. Why? Because if they are not able to take care of one commandment, there are at least 1,800 commandments, laws and commandments, putting together both Old Covenant and New Covenant. No way in their life they would, would have accomplished it. I am not mocking them, but I am telling the truth. All right. So, on the same lines, so you understand the law of nature, right? As much as the earth is... Um, obedient to God as much as the planets like Mars and Sun and Jupiter and Pluto uh, they are obedient to God they operate uh, at a certain distance they revolve at a certain speed right 
um, they actually move around in a certain frequency or degree that's why this universe is still existing and God is the ruler of the universe and all the nature right the law of the nature abides in the commandment of God shame on us right and they are not created in the image of God they are just serving God and like they're like lifeless they are breathless they are only objects which God had created and the birds of the air every day they look up to God thanking God for the food they are going to get for the day and God feeds them Bible says in Matthew 6 Jesus said that right as much as the birds of the air and the creations uh, which are animals with five senses right they don't have a spiritual sense and they don't have something called as common sense either but they thank God every single day in advance for what God is going to give them because they have the confidence the God Almighty who created us and was sent to this world is going to take good care of us is not going to let us down and therefore they believe the God Almighty who sent them to this earth do we have that much of belief in us all right we will continue to meditate from the teachings of Jesus my time is almost up but I'm seeing what a little I could do because the next teaching is going to be a little big a little mightier and it's not something that you can ignore um, it's not something that you could count it lightly but it's something that is very important for every mankind um, why because it's important it's significant there is no other reason I could think of um, and that is very significant why because the entire spiritual doctrine is simply based on that specific um, teaching okay enough of suspense um, we had been talking through the teachings of Jesus number one was love God with all your heart mind and soul and number two was love your neighbor as you as much as you love yourself and number three was forgive others who have wronged you we spoke predominantly from the book of Matthew 22 37 39 and Matthew 5 43 to 44 love your enemies now the next one we are going to talk through is nothing but ask God for forgiveness of your sins so the more you ask God for the forgiveness of sins the more you are going to be sailing with him and I'm going to take little time in asking for in, in meditating through this right see we I forgot the exact chapter from where we discussed this when we spoke about forgiving others we also make a prayer no Jesus taught us the prayer in the book of John our father in heaven hallowed be thy name like forgive our trespasses as we forgive other people's trespasses right and that's why when you forgive others you need to understand you're doing a favor to yourself you're not doing a favor to your neighbor you're not doing a favor to God why because that's the conditional statement that's the law of forgiveness we are going to discuss a little bit on the law of forgiveness what it is to what it means to ask for forgiveness what it means to forgive others yeah that's called as law when it comes to law you have certain instructions you have certain doctrines you have certain principles if you don't abide if you ignore any of these parameters then what happens is you're violating the law you'll be the violator of the law and you're going to be punished you're going to be condemned and you don't want to be condemned you don't want to be punished don't you so you better pay attention that is conditional right because each time you forgive others that's why when you get an opportunity to forgive somebody please do it without a second thought do not carry on this grudges do not carry on the load of garbage in your heart or mind because why that's only going to put you in a dangerous spot because why God is not able to forgive you why because you have violated the law of forgiveness the first half you violated therefore the second half remains unaccomplished in your life many of your sins have remained unforgiven from the kingdom of heaven God had not approved of his forgiveness why because you have not forgiven people you have not let go certain bad things certain you know crazy things that people might have done against you I'm not saying it is right but that's why I'm going in detail helping you to understand the foundational principles of Christian teachings introduced or spoken to us clearly by our Lord Jesus and that is New Testament right all about Jesus teachings and parables based on which Paul ended up writing 14 epistles few of them were letters one of them was the book of Hebrews and then you see other apostles like Peter other apostles like James and they've all written 
all the books based on what Jesus taught, what Jesus spoke through parables, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, right? The remaining and all the way until the book of Revelation, how we are going to be judged and how we are going to make your way either into paradise and then all the way to the city of God that's called as heaven or you make your way to the place of torment that's hell and then you will make your way all the way to the lake of fire. You don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. I don't want any of my brothers or sisters to go there, not even the worst of my enemies to go there. Sorry, I got a little emotion. I don't want any of us to go there because that's not the desire of God. And the heaven is going to be so depressed each time they lose a person, each time they lose a soul. And every time the devil goes around and wins the soul of God, the image of God, right? The children of God, the heaven is going to be very, very depressed. You will see absolute calmness. Because why they are saddened, but when that same soul comes back to Christ, when the same soul is saved and accepts Jesus as their Lord of Lords and King of Kings, oh, there is great shout and rejoice in the kingdom of heaven, Bible says. And all of these to happen, the law of forgiveness plays a key role. Why? Because the more you have the desire not to forgive others, the lesser you grow in your spiritual standards. In the sense, you will start moving backward. Have you seen anybody walking backward? You want to go to office, you walk forward or backward. You drive your car, you know, shifting that front gear, first gear, or you put that reverse gear and start driving it backward. You will be dashing against your house. Why? Because you park your car in the garage. You want to put that first gear and move the car smoothly out and then you go all the way to your office. That's called the spiritual growth. And you know what helps you to grow spiritually? The law of forgiveness helps you to grow. The more you are grounded and rooted and strong in this law of forgiveness, I will tell you the entire Christian teaching revolves around this forgiveness. If you might have gone through the first few uh, laws which Jesus introduced as part of his teachings, I've picked and I've, I've picked and chose, I've, I've handpicked and chosen some of the important principles that Jesus spoke. You can call it law, you can call it principle, you can call it teaching, you can call it commandment. It's up to you. Love God with all your heart, mind and soul. Yeah, because why? You have the confidence that God is going to forgive you all of your sins, regardless of however worse it could be, however least it could be. Least of the sins to the worst of the sins. God is ready to forgive you. And secondly, love your neighbor as yourself. If you love your neighbor as yourself, you're ready to forgive him as much as God had forgiven you. Maybe your neighbor committed worst of the crimes. He irritated you to the core. You are ready to forgive him the least of the sins and the worst of the sins. Thirdly, very direct commandment from Jesus, forgive others who have wronged you. Intentionally, some people commit their crime against you. Intentionally, they betray you. Intentionally, they backstab you. Intentionally, they backbite you. Intentionally, they gossip. Intentionally, they murmur, ridicule. They pull you down. But again, the law of forgiveness, Jesus makes it a point there. Love your enemies, yeah? People who hate you to death. Whenever you think of such people, right? I want to tell one incident and then I will close this session. And this is only a context. We are setting the context and we are talking through this law of forgiveness for you to understand the basics. I took a little longer because why? We are going to spend little time in this law of forgiveness. I could actually make this as a separate series, but then it won't look good. Why? Because it's all part of the Christian foundational principle. These are all the foundational teachings of Jesus, the basics of his teachings. Therefore, we need to spend a little time here. Okay, now, the you know, right, what Nazis did to the Israelis, right? They basically took them to a camp and they made them to be stripped off naked. I'm talking about ladies. This is the way how they treated them, especially men are no different. And they have to go through the um, uh, some parade or something like that. And they would be checking them and all that. There was a specific general who was very, very brutal to, uh, you know, a couple of sisters. Uh, 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 there, there were two sisters. And the younger one had been brutally raped in front of the elder sister. And at some point of time, the elder sister was murdered. And the younger sister was about to be killed. By then, the war came to an end. And they announced democracy and they were freed. And the younger sister made her way all the way to US. And from there she accepted Christ. And now she had made every effort to find out the whereabouts of the general who tortured her. And she wants to go and meet him 
and ask for forgiveness. No, no, uh, not ask for forgiveness. Tell him that she had forgiven him wholehearted. And I think it was arranged uh, with the help of the media and all that. And it was like a press conference where this lady writes in her biography. I forgot her name. It's definitely in the Google. I got reminded of the story and I have to tell you this. This is not part of my notes else I would have come with her name. And then she goes and she meets him. He's standing right in front of her and she's standing right in front of him. The lady was very honest in her biography. She's saying, my hands did not come out of my pockets to reach out to him and shake hand and say that, brother in Christ, I have forgiven all the tortures you have done against me. Her hands were not coming out. Why? Because when she looked at him, she got reminded of every torture, every single moment of time that fellow would have raped her. That fellow would have tortured her, brutally harassed her. And she was not ready. I'm telling you that there is nothing wrong in the sister. If I was there, probably I would have taken my hands and slapped him off in front of the media. If I was there, probably I would have kicked him somewhere else. And I would have hurt him brutally and killed him there. But that's the best opportunity to take revenge on him. But this sister, finally, she remembered Christ. She remembered these laws of forgiveness, law of forgiveness, what Jesus taught. Love God, love your neighbor, forgive others who have wronged you and love your enemies. And therefore the sister takes off her hand and she reaches out and she handshakes him and she says, Brother in Christ, today I am forgiving you. I'm sorry. I, I'm really sorry. I was, I was weeping very loudly. I couldn't control my tears and emotions. Because why? I was not part of that press conference. I was not part of that encounter between that sister and that guy who tortured. But then I already imagine if I was there, this is how exactly I would have reacted. Don't you think so? I'm telling you, beloved, this is the law of forgiveness. And I'm asking every one of you to seriously th think through it today, tonight, whichever time zone, whichever country you are there. Don't carry this hatred. Don't carry this grudge. Don't carry this incidents of the past because they are only going to take you to one place where you don't want to go and that's the lake of fire. Why? Because I told you, right, we are going to go through a detailed study from next session on this law of forgiveness. We are going to spend two or three sessions there. I'm telling you, you will understand the reason why God sent Jesus to this world is for two reasons. Number one, abolish the law of sin and number two introduce the law of forgiveness and both of them are proportional the more you forgive the more you are away from your sinful deeds if you don't have forgiving attitude and you may say that i'm not a drunkard i'm not an alcoholic i'm not a rapist it doesn't matter to god matthew 25 god says i knew not who you are this wicked servant throw him into the dungeon where there will be gnashing of teeth and where there will be burning and shouting and wailing you don't want to go there and these are the two things Jesus came to do. In a, you, know, you read the entire Bible, you will understand. If you want to encompass people who have gone through the Bible colleges and all, they give one exercise. I've heard I've not gone to Bible college. They will ask you to read the entire chapter. They will give one exercise. The entire chapter, they want you to encompass it in one title, one word. Right? That Likewise, if the entire genealogy from the birth of Christ all the way to the death and resurrection and he's our intercessor, you want to... Uh, convey in two points or two bullet points I would say Jesus came to introduce uh, abolish the law of sin Jesus came to introduce the law of forgiveness anybody can prove me wrong after you go through the Bible and after you hear this message uh, you are welcome you will definitely agree with me my beloved brother my beloved sister why because more than any other laws there are other laws law of authority law of uncleanliness there are so many laws law of Sabbath and law of offering etc etc Compared to any of this, Jesus came to emphatically talk about these two important things. You need to hate sin. Therefore, you abide in the law of sin. And law of sin introduces holiness. And you are holy to God. You are the holy servant of God. Yeah, Those who are holy and righteous, they shall become more holy and righteous, Revelation 22.11 says. Whereas if you are, and the second commandment, law of forgiveness, God created us to love each other. We are made for each other. We are here to help each other. We are here to support each other. Especially we are here to forgive each other. And that's why I told you that incident. And after that, that army general wept before that lady. 
and then he gave a hug and then you know the whole thing is available in the me media uh, no, no, sorry in the google right and that's the power of forgiveness it will make a person's heart to melt like wax he may be a stone hearted person but this love can break that it's like a dynamite it will break that hard heart attitude into pieces he will be crushed and grinded to powder yeah you may use any other techniques you may have that um, uh, uh, what to say the law of trickery law of treachery law of sorcery law of this and law of that you can take any law that guy will remain like that only you think this sister is going to try him in court by law and condemn him and all that probably the law would have forgiven him why because it all happened before the war not after the war and the sister would have lost her case but the sister fought the right battle taking this law of forgiveness introduced by our lord jesus all right now we are going to talk through this right ask god for forgiveness of your sins is the next important teaching or foundational principle introduced by our lord jesus and that's exactly what i would like to entitle as law of forgiveness and we are going to spend little time in walking through and study in detail on this law of forgiveness and it's only going to help you stay tuned i will meet you soon and all heads bowed down and eyes closed heavenly father we want to appreciate for this beautiful teaching from this word of god lord thank you for letting us know that we need to understand who you are the more we understand who we are who who you are we march forward in our spiritual growth thank you for instilling that attitude and dynamicity in us in jesus name we pray amen god bless you my dear brothers and sisters share this um, channel details and this playlist these videos with your near ones dear ones be an instrument in the hands of god you also subscribe to our channel you will get automatic notification do not miss on any of these teachings these are only going to help you we don't need popularity we don't need money we need your support for our ministry and you know what is that pray for us remember us in your daily prayers and ask god to um, you know sub- help us and lead us by his divine will and plan and secondly never ever refrain from sharing this with your neighbors i may not be a popular person but the word of god is as 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 it's enough popularity and importance in it so therefore do not refrain it from sharing god bless you and i will meet you soon i love you bye